community of New Denmark has plenty of tall trees, but there's something here that dwarfs even the forests. Spanning a valley between two hills, this enormous train bridge was declared the second largest of its kind in Canada when it was built. Towering more than 200 feet above the Salmon River, the trestle spans more than 1.2 kilometers. In October of 1910, St. John's Daily Telegraph proclaimed that 10 years hence, it will be famous. But today, locals feel like the sprawling structure is their best kept secret. The trestle was completed in 1911, made from more than 7,000 tons of steel. I don't, I never saw another one like that, <laughs> you know. Eudor Michaud grew up in the shadow of this bridge. When he was older, he moved to Montreal for 18 years, but he missed the area, including the bridge and the trains, and convinced his wife to move back with him to a home under the bridge. When you see the train cross, it looks like that train's floating across the sky. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's nice to see that. I sometimes, I saw, I saw it. One time there, there were eight engines in front of the train. Hey, that was, hey, that's heavy to pass on, you know? He admits to free climbing the bridge when he was a kid, a stomach-churning thought. In Canada, it is illegal to walk on or along a railway. These days, he's much more content to keep his feet on the ground. I don't fear it, passing and that make me sleep. When I they pass there at 10, 10 o'clock, I go to bed and I know there's two trains gonna pass. So I'm, after they pass there, I'm out. <laughs> that's, your, that's your alarm clock sort of deal. That's it. <laughs> it's the centerpiece of the community, inspiring Gunnar Peterson, who turns 100 next month, to spend a good chunk of last year building a model of the bridge. I really never mark down the hours, but I know, <clears throat> I know there's a few months on there. <laughs> Peterson first laid eyes on the trestle when he was five years old, an immigrant from Denmark. That was in 1928. So building this model with his son-in-law, Ray Christensen, was a way to pay tribute to the transportation link that continues to connect Moncton to Quebec City and the rest of the country. And despite being more than a century old, it still carries trains across this valley up to 10 times a day. And for those who live in the shadow of the bridge, they wouldn't have it any other way. Be aware of, uh, of all the beauty that we have here in, in uh, our own province. And, uh, and I guess probably not to take it for granted. Yeah.